This is the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable, a special of the Behind the Mic Show, presented by Ford of Tuscola. Now here's your host, former world heavyweight champions, Mo Money, Keith Gibson, and the great one, Sam Irwin. Welcome, everybody, to the premiere episode of the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable. I am your host, Keith Gibson, and alongside me, as always, my tag team partner for the Behind the Mic Show, Sam Irwin. Welcome, Sammy. Hey, thank you. Yes, nice to be here. Yeah, as always. And also joining us, he's not just a baseball analyst for the Behind the Mic Show, but he's also a wrestling enthusiast. Shane Stone Cypher's here with us. Well, thank you for having me. But I got one question. So we're doing a Champs and Chump tour. Yes. Yeah, we're so, the champs. So who's the champ between, and who's the chump between you and Sam? Oh, I'm oh no, we're both the champs. That's plural. You're the chumps. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's how that goes. <laughs> and also, with, under th- with over 30 years' experience in wrestling, watching, performing, and being creative with it, some call him Mike. We call him Narge is here with us. Absolute pleasure to be here, guys. Looking forward to it. So, we got a lot of things to talk about today. We're going to talk mainly about SummerSlam since it is this evening. We're going to talk about our, our favorite SummerSlam memories, and I'm sure with uh, – uh, there's going to be some older memories thrown out there for some of our younger listeners who may not remember some of those things. Sure. Uh, but as we're all, uh, you know, not young pups anymore. Back when it was good. Right. You know I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the, the SummerSlam this year itself and our, kind of our predictions of what's going to happen, what can we expect from tonight's show, and uh, where it will take it moving forward. So we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to listen to our great sponsors. And then we'll come back and we'll get right into some of our favorite SummerSlam memories here on the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable from the Cheap Seats Sports Bar Grill. Check out the all-new Ford of Tuscola. It's a small-town feel with great big deals. Pre-owned vehicles starting at $24.95. Online at FordofTuscola.com or call 217-253-3353. Welcome back, everybody, to the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable. I am Keith Gibson. Alongside me today, Sam Irwin, Shane Stone, Cypher, and Narge. And gentlemen, this is our premiere edition. I want to thank all of you for being here. I hope the guys listening and, and the ladies listening enjoy wrestling, because if they don't, they're going to have some knowledge thrown on today, I'm sure. But uh, another year of SummerSlam. Can anybody tell me what year SummerSlam started? Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with uh, 1988, Alex. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's no. wow. Uh, wow. And I just remember that was, uh, uh, I mean, as a kid, you know, WrestleMania three is kind of where it all like really exploded. And I just remember that that being like the next year after that, uh, uh, WrestleMania three being in eighty seven, headlined by Hogan and Andre. And then it was, and then it just seemed like after that event, it was just like, how much more can we do? And so that just. For me, that's how that sticks out in terms of where it began with SummerSlam back in the back in the uh, uh, it wasn't really the rock, rock and wrestling era anymore at that point, was it? No, I think that moved on. Yeah, it, yeah you know, but uh, yeah, definitely '87. That's hard. I was six for SummerSlam. Six years old. <laughs> there you go. How, how old were you? Well, I was '88. Not eighty, not eighty-six. 80, 80, 80, 80. Uh, so I would have been, I'd have been eight because I wouldn't. I, I would have been nine in November, but. Uh, so I had been, I saw I'd been eight years old. Sammy, how old were you? No comments. No. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been eleven. Would have been eleven. So, yeah. Narge, uh, I'm the pup. I'd have been four years old, but I was Alex. already into wrestling at that point. So oh, Hogan and Andre was the start for me. Uh, I think me it was too. the start for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. What's what's some of your guys' favorite memories? Sammy, let's start with you. What's one of your favorite uh, SummerSlam memories? You know, and sometimes you gotta. I, I don't – maybe the guys that we're on the show with, they're probably much more knowledgeable on wrestling and the history of it. Um, so I kind of went back through some old ones today, and I did a little research, Keith. Oh, How about that? Hey! Yeah. So, hey. Yeah. so I, I went and did a little research. Of course, you and I have talked about this. SummerSlam is obviously not the, the biggest of events. You know, it's just kind of a – maybe it used to be, but anymore it's kind of lost some of its thunder, if you will. But my favorite one of looking back through all of them, was the TLC match with the Dudley Boys versus the Hardy Boys versus Edge and Christian. That match was incredible. And somebody probably should have died in that match. It was terrible <laughs> that they didn't. But uh, it sure looked like they tried to kill one another. And that was back in the year 2000. So, uh, but that was, uh, that was one hell of a match. And those guys, you talk about putting on a show, I bet they were uh, sore for a while after that because that was uh, a rough one for sure. Apparently that was very, very entertaining. <laughs> 
Jeff, that? Hardy, Jeff Hardy still pay, taking pain pills for it. Uh, yeah, I think that's part of the issue. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, what about you? Man, what about me? So, again, I'll go back to that very first one. Um, so, again, eight year old boy just in love with everything that WWF is pushing out. Uh, and actually, wasn't a big Hogan guy so much. I really liked at that time the Ultimate Warrior. So, he comes out oh. in SummerSlam 88 and kills the honky tonk man in like 12 seconds. Yeah, it oh. wasn't long. So, the whole match, I mean, I, um, you know, I've, I've seen this on replay, you know, several times, but the, the setup was, I, I thought, brilliant, you know, looking back at it. But, you know, honky, the, the honky tonk man of all guys uh, had this remarkable run with the, with the IC belt, uh, something like two years or a year and a half, or it, it was a long time. And uh, showed up to SummerSlam without an opponent, goes out, cuts a promo, says, send me out anybody. And, and one thing that was really cool about the Ultimate Warrior was when his music hit, man, it was, it was just high intensity. It was pumped up. It was, it was ready to go. And so that was just, that, that was just really cool when it comes out and just, just destroys Honky and gets his <laughs> destroys, He destroyed a Honky. You heard that right Wow. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the racial part of the podcast. Hey, get that out of the way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, 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 that's what I go back to is uh, 88 Honky Talk Man and, uh, and, and uh, Ultimate Warrior. Narge, what about you? I've went back and forth with this all day long, and I've got a couple, but the one that sticks out to me the most is 89, Hogan, Beefcake, against Zeus and Randy Zeus. Savage. As a kid, I'm, you know, I'm five years old. Zeus was larger than life. Yep. No Holds Bard was awesome. Scary to death. That scared summer. me to death when he was on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. The, the lazy yep. eye, the <laughs> – the unibrow, uh, yeah, uh-huh. three, three moves. They, they, you know, they give Hogan. Uh, he's, Hogan's got five moves. Zeus literally had two. He had a bear hug and uh, a clothesline. And how that didn't win Best Picture, <laughs> 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 I have no idea. No idea. You guys just, you guys just talked about two. Let me pick on you guys for a second. Uh, you guys just talked about greatest movie roles, and yet nobody dropped Hogan. And no holds barred. Well, because Days of Thunder may have, Days of Thunder may have came up, uh, or what was it, Thunder in Paradise, or whatever Paradise. it was. Right. Paradise yeah. How Hogan. Hogan yeah, and it's a crying shame, and that obviously shows the bias that is in Hollywood. Hogan <laughs> never won an Academy Award because those were. I, in fact, you bring up No Holds Barred. I actually, it was on TV or something. It's been a little while ago, and it came. I thought, oh. Wow, this was awesome. When I was a kid. I thought, I'll watch this. I made it about two minutes, and I thought, I can't do it. I just, it's so bad that I had to turn. I'm like, nope, nope, terrible, terrible, terrible. So, you know, much better in childhood. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite memory from SummerSlam. Um, I enjoyed all the all the older ones, you know, where it was uh, so minor. You're my favorite, too, as well, or Warrior. You know, picturing him giving the, the big splash on the back of the honky, you know, Zeus and, and Hogan going at it. Um, I enjoyed the undercards, though. You know, Red Heart, Mr. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite, though, I, I, I've been talking, as Nard said, you think about this all day. Maybe when it was in England was Red Heart oh, and the Bulldog. Bulldog. Yeah. Uh, just the way the crowd reacted when the Bulldog won. Uh, it was, you know, for the IC title, so the first time that the Intercontinental title was in a main event. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite memories from SummerSlam as well. And But we've had some good ones. But, Sam, you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, SummerSlam may have lost its luster. You know, you used to be the, the big four. You had WrestleMania, mm-hmm. SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and the Rumble. Mm-hmm. In your guys' opinion, has has the big four lost some of its luster because of all the pay-per-views? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hands down, no doubt. It's I mean, too much. Yeah, well, too much too often. Better. They don't build well, and they don't build up and tell stories anymore, so it's like, what's the point of the pay-per-view? So, you know, that's the – maybe they're getting better at that, hopefully now, but that's been a lot of it for me. So what, what do you think changes that besides dropping pay-per-views? Is it making a storyline go yes. multiple pay-per-views and building yes. up? Yes. Or it uh, could be less talent. I mean, I'm sorry, less talent. Uh, less of the talent. No, right? that's in this room. <laughs> that's in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you've got so, many, you got so many wrestlers on your roster. And, you know, take this approach of, like, don't, don't put – you don't have to put everybody on every show every time. So, like, um, you know, if you have somebody – Maybe, maybe you tee up a story here um, tonight on uh, in SummerSlam. And you just kind of, you know, you don't have to do it. Then you don't, have to, you don't have to plug it on Raw tomorrow. You don't have to plug it on Raw for the next, you know, you know just let, let, it, let, it, let it simmer. Just leave it alone. 
come back maybe in a month from now on Raw or something and kind of maybe tease it again and, and then tee it up for, for, uh, uh, for Survivor Series, something like that. But too much content just really waters down when you try to pull off these big shows. How are you going to show me something we haven't seen already? That's right. a great point. Or if you are going to actually bring some talent on instead of leaving them back in the locker room and making them show up for I don't know why, is spend less time on showing us – you know, the video packages that have led up to this point, we've watched it. We know what's going on. We're not idiots. We don't have to see this again. How much time does that take? So if you cut all that away and let's just get into the matches, that would uh, be a way to get some talent out there on TV. So that would help too. I think it boils down. Yeah, we agree. There's too many pay-per-views. There's not enough build. So even if you cut it down from 12 to 6, get a Mm -hmm. two-month build in there. I mean, as a kid, you know, growing up, you couldn't wait from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. That buildup right. was just weekly on the TV shows. They didn't have all of these little pay-per-views in between where things could change. Mm-hmm. Money in the bank, extreme rules. There's too much. You get invested. I mean, Royal Rumble is mm-hmm. a good example. You get invested in something that changes a month or two later, and you're not right. getting what you expected. Well, well and how many, if you think about how many times in the late 90s and early 2000s when Stone Cold and The Rock were you know, blowing the roof off the place, how many pay-per-views did they wrestle or interacted or whether it was Stone Cold and Vince McMahon, that went on for, what, you know, years, and we didn't mind, you know. So I guess society's changed, too. People don't like to wait. You know, they want answers and stuff right now. So it's maybe lot, that's yeah, what they're doing. A lot. But I think that Attention spans. To, I think it speaks to the quality of those two performers, though, more than anything, because – That's just, that's true, too. You know, there is no mm-hmm. Stone Cold to rock on on, the, on today's roster, at least not that uh, – Nope. In my opinion, that kind of keeps your attention. Like, you couldn't get enough of those guys, in my opinion, back at that right. era – you know, there, there was no watering those guys down because they were just so creative with what they were doing. They kept it fresh. They kept it entertaining. And, and it Keith, fun. are we are we moving on from our favorite SummerSlam matches now? Or do we still oh, have well, a I thought we just I thought we'd just talk about, about SummerSlam. Our thoughts are kind of the product here before we take a break and listen to our sponsors again. But I want to throw out the opinion of, you know, I think what's missing from, from wrestling, too, is, is, you know, we're talking about build-up SummerSlam. There's not been a whole lot of it because Extreme Rules was just a month ago. Right. So, I, looking at that, you know, I miss the, the Piper's Pits, the Brother Love Show, you know, the little segments like that. You had a lot of things happen in those segments that started another feud, that started another story, you know, or, or prolonged another story for another two, three weeks because of that. And I think that's what WWE is missing. I don't know where these writers are coming from. And, Sam, you and I have talked about it on the Behind the Mic show uh, several mm-hmm. times. And if you haven't listened to any of our Behind the Mic shows – Make sure you tune in and take a listen to them. They're available on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and, and Podbean. That's a nice, cheap plug. Outstanding, Thank you. love it. Thank you. Yes. Right here from the Sports Bar and Grill. I'll give Mick Foley a thumbs up there. But um, <laughs> but I think that's that's what a lot they're they're missing there is is there's not enough build and there's no reason to tune in. They're not. Right. They're not and you, giving, you got like the Kevin Owens show. You got the Miz TV, but that's yeah, not but, the same. I mean, that's no, not because they're the same every week, and they they do them too much. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So uh, we're, we'll take a quick break here, and we'll get here from our sponsors, and we'll come back and we'll talk about this evening's SummerSlam and talk about the card and our predictions and where we see it going moving on from here. So you're listening to Champs and Chumps, premier edition of the Wrestling Roundtable from the Behind the Mic. Let me start that over again. How about we start this right here and came and spit it out on the premier edition. It's a Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable from the Cheap Seat Sports Bar and Grill. And we'll be back after these messages. Bees Trees, your local ISA certified arborist with over 10 years experience specializing in tree removal, tree trimming, and with free estimates. Call Greg Miller of Bees Trees today at 217-260-4551. Welcome back to the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable here from the Cheap Seat Sports Bar and Grill. A special will start monthly here from the Behind the Mic show. And joining me, as always, if you're just joining us or, or forgot who we are, I'm your host, Keith Gibson. I've got the great one, Sam Irwin, with mm. me. Shane Stone Cipher, our MLB analyst from the Behind the Mic show, but also a wrestling enthusiast and a man who has over 30 years of fun wrestling in the ring, outside the ring. Narge is here with us as well, so we appreciate everybody, all three of you guys being here with us, except for Irwin. I really don't care whether he's here or not. But <laughs> I got nothing going on, so yeah, that's why you always get me. We're yeah, used right. to it. But, hey, yeah. we've talked a little bit about uh, <laughs> our favorite SummerSlam memories. Uh, what's, we can talk a little bit here. We're getting the match card predictions for the evening. This is SummerSlam Sunday. Uh, so let's start with uh, the Cruiserweight Championship. And Sam, I know you're going to know a lot about this match. 
Yeah, give it to me. Yeah, who we got? <laughs> Drew Gulak, or I like to call him Mr. Goulash. Yeah, heard and of him. Tony Lorkin. And who? Yeah, that's that's the point. <laughs> All right. Five live cruiserweights. No, nothing. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I got nothing. Sorry, I got nothing on that one. Yeah. You, you want to take the goulash for the win? I'll take the goulash. It's a good, it's a good dish, and that's what I'm gonna go with. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane, Shane, I like goulash myself too. I actually love sounds pretty goulash. My, my, my grandma made a killer pot of goulash back in the day. <laughs> I don't mind it too, but my wife can't. For, for, oh, you know. lost points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane, who do you like in the match? Oh man, see, uh, so here's where I think it's just hard to be a wrestling uh, performer because you got some guys that just work the tails off in these cruiserweights, but yet. Few people really know a whole lot about them, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll keep the goulash here for the win. But uh, <laughs> you know, again, these guys can put on a, a heck of a show. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm sure they're they're going to be uh, really strong in the ring. But again, where's the storytelling? Where's my vested interest? It, you know, it's not really there. It's on the pre-show. That's it's on where the pre-show. Yeah. So give me give me give me the champ, Narge. Uh, I'm going to stick with Gulak as well. I like Lorkin. He's a good hand. He was doing the tag team thing in NXT for a while, and they, they touched. They were close to the tag team titles with Danny Birch. But uh, I think the Gulak train keeps rolling tonight. So it's, I want to throw the uh, macaroni in the pot and call it a goulash all around the table tonight. <laughs> that's what's for dinner uh, because I think that that's uh, – uh, I think I don't see the title changing hands. There's no point in it. There's no reason for it. So. Um, we'll, we'll mix it up here a little bit here. Uh, there's a couple of show matches that were announced for the pre-show earlier. Uh, it was the Iconics, uh, which I think I have going for them are good looks. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're yeah. Australian. Mm -hmm. Against Alexa Bliss mm -hmm. and Nikki Cross, who's actually, I think, an underrated performer. So, Norris, we'll start with you. We'll go back around the other way of the table here. Uh, what is what's your take on that, and what's your take on Bliss and Cross winning the titles on Raw? I, I think it's a good move. Um, the Iconics, the, there wasn't a whole lot going on with them there for a while. They're, you know, they were coming out and doing some angles against local talent, things like that. I like Nikki and Alexa. I think there's a swerve coming, and I think it's the opposite of what the you know what they're wanting. I think Nikki's going to be the one to swerve Alexa at some point. I'm an Iconics fan. I got the T-shirt at home. Those are my girls, so I'm, I'm backing them tonight. Shane? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'll uh, I'll take Lexi and uh, and uh, Nikki Cross. Uh, you know, we just put the straps on them. I don't know this is necessarily a return uh, uh, moment for the Iconics. Um, and, and again, you talk about like teeing up a story. You know, you wonder if this might be something between the. Uh, uh, Alexa Bliss and uh, Nikki Cross, something maybe for, for a Survivor Series, you know, with, in terms of a turn. Uh, in, in a situation like that, maybe I can see that the, the belt's going back to the Iconics, but I think it's been too much on uh, buildup, I guess, with, uh, you know, Alexa and uh, uh, Nikki Cross, and, and that's who I'll, uh, I'll take on that one. Sammy? Uh, Alexa Bliss, uh, seven days a week, and even, <laughs> even more than that, just <laughs> for her ability, really. Uh, no, yeah, I tell you what, she, she's, I mean, she's just really good on the mic. She does, I mean, she does everything. She's good. She, I mean, she's such a tiny thing, but she does put on a good show. She I do agree with those guys. I think the twist is coming at some point. I don't think tonight, I still think we're a ways off on that. I do think Nikki's going to do her little crazy thing again or whatever she does. But, you know, thank God above. They finally took the belts off the Iconics because they are just horrendous oh. in every way, shape, and form. Well, I just can't, I can't do it. And it's like, please get them off the TV, please. Well, here's, here's my thing so, with them. Is, is and I will take Alexa and, and Nikki tonight to take the to keep the titles. But did they really? Uh, since the tag team titles have came out for the women, uh, you know, it was on much. Sasha yeah. and Bailey. They haven't done anything with them, and this whole revolution, women's revolution that they're wanting to push, you'd think they'd want to push those tag team titles a little stronger, but they aren't. What's your what's your guys think thoughts behind that, and why they haven't pushed them as hard as they could? I think um, after just not the belts, but the women in general, after Ronda Rousey left, mm -hmm. WWE's kind of pumped the brakes. I, I don't think they're confident enough in any one individual nope. female. Uh, nope. Charlotte is is great. She kind of got her own thing going on. Becky, I don't think, gets the reaction that they were hoping for. Becky comes across as too cocky, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not an mm -hmm. Austin type, but almost a, a rock heel type, and I don't think the crowd digs it. I think uh, with Becky, nope. 
I think when you, when when she had that, and in fact, we're talking about SummerSlam. It was SummerSlam 2018. Correct. When she had her big turn and got on the uh, momentum that she's on, you know, uh, they carried her into WrestleMania. But but like when she was getting over the way she was, you didn't hear a lot from her, right? It was you know, right. So I think there's there's too much mic work with her right now, and I don't. She's not, she's not a bad promo. She's not a great promo. She's not a bad promo either. But I just think. You know, let let you let your action speak. You know, keep uh, keep your promos down maybe a little bit, and uh, um, because I mean the the fan base appears to still be behind her. Um, maybe it, it, you know Rousey brought up that to another level, but you know I agree. You know, with with Rousey uh, being out, it, it's kind of yeah. What are you doing? Um, but yeah, you know, what do you think about the tag belts? Well, I think Sasha Banks <laughs> said what's what's going on. I mean, <laughs> wasn't happy she had seen her since right. So. That's a shame too. Well, and then you go back to maybe have they even announced the tag, the tag, uh, tag team champions uh, that, that there's going to be a tag team champion for the women. It was just a, it was just a, a mention on Raw, right? From Vince McMahon, it wasn't no big build mm-hmm. up. It was just, uh, oh hey, by the way, this is what we're doing. And, and uh, you know, I'm a little surprised that it's not uh, they're not doing more maybe to build it up. You know, being a new title, being the women's revolution. Yeah. So let me ask you, Sam. I'll get your take on that real quick, and then I. I oh, I'm you. not. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that they haven't done that because what has WWE, WWE even done with titles for anybody in the last several years? They've become pointless, really, if you think about it. So it's like, why would they put any stock or put any thought into the the women's and actually pushing that because they just don't value titles anymore? So it's not a surprise. And and just like uh, someone else just said. You've only got – when you talk about women's wrestling right now in the WWE, there's two women that really come to mind, and that's it. So what can you really do, you know, until you start to, you know, really push them? I mean, they had Asuka for – you know, and she was, like, built up to be this incredible thing. Yeah, now, I mean, they've had to put her as a Who? tag team person. <laughs> at Who? Right. And that's the problem is, like, you made her into this monster, and all of a sudden she has an incredible match with Flair at WrestleMania, and then poof, you're done. It's like, wait a minute, she could be – really good and, and up there you could have more than just two women and for some reason they buried her i don't know what happened there i know she can't talk on the mic at all but still you know get her a manager and go from there so like good page back. i don't mind seeing page on tv uh-huh. that's just yeah. fine keep that going page and lana i miss them yes yeah, yes greatly greatly so my, my other question for you guys while we're talking about the women's tag team titles here are they a better fit for smackdown or are they better to stay on smackdown or are they a better fit for raw my opinion is they're a better fit for SmackDown. Yours? I absolutely agree. I think SmackDown needs it. Um, if Ronda was to come back, um, she could interject her. You know, more women on SmackDown it would be a good thing. With it going to Fox, they're going to want Ronda at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, does she come back as a singles competitor? They team her up with somebody and make her just, you know, this big match. That's how you build the division. You got to inject a name into it. They lost Sasha. You got to bring somebody back who's going to help pump them up. Other than all the 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 B level ladies, so B level. I'm not used to dealing with B level. Usually it's C and D level. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I got an A plus when I married her. All right. Wait. Good save. Good Thank you. Save. Thank you. Shane, what's your thoughts on that? Is it a SmackDown uh, or is it, should it be? A, you know, I'm indifferent. I guess. Um, uh yeah i mean i i mean i i guess i would lean one way maybe towards smackdown but uh, i don't know that so i've got strong opinions on which, which you say you're which, indifferent so if they went away you wouldn't care either well no i think there needs to be something you know there, there's not enough main event level women I, I do think there needs to be some sort of second title uh within the women's whether that's a women's version of, a, of an ic title or whether it's you know in this example that tag title i do think there needs to be a second title because again there's just not that many main event women to go after a um, and, and not enough main event level men. Don't get me this. Button. This isn't a man versus woman thing. It's just there's just not enough, uh, you know, people that are over, people that are again keep your attention to, you know, compete for the top spot. So there needs to be something to kind of again keep that division, you know, interesting and keep fans, you know, engaged. So, uh, but no, I think with the move to uh, the the the, the uh, move to Fox with SmackDown, I think it's probably more relevant for those to be, you know, on Smack. You know, maybe for nothing else than that, Sammy. What I think is a lot of nobody cares what you think. <laughs> I was waiting. I can't believe it hasn't. T- I can't believe it took this long. All right, uh, but no. What I think is now that I'm not rudely interrupted is I think if you're, if you're going to focus on a couple of the women or four tops or where, okay, fine. Make sure they get on TV. Get them a match every week. But what if? Hear me out on this. 
since you've got the WWE, ne WWE Network, and I believe you shared something on Facebook that NXT, maybe that's for a later podcast, but NXT is going to be going on Wednesday nights, correct? Correct. So if you're bringing NXT to Wednesday nights, that frees up some room on the WWE Network. Make an all-ladies show like Glow used to be. And don't they have Glow on Netflix now? It's like a TV show that they produce and make. I think where it's all. I believe women. so. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, so it's kind of a remake of the '80s and all that of when that. If you remember that as a kid, I think we all probably watched it. I remember there's like a wrestler named Medusa, and then there was Queen something. I mean, I forget what the name was, but there were several of those ladies. So just put them on the WWE network, let them get some work, and just focus it solely on the ladies. And I mean, I'm sure there's a big enough following. It gets more women out there. Maybe gets more people tuning in the show, and they can watch it whenever they want on the network. And as, as they practice and build up, then maybe you can start as they get better putting them on, you know, the main show and working in and out from there. That's just an idea. Well, that's, I think that's all, all three valid and, and great points. And Shane, you brought up that they need a second title. Well, it, and I'm going to interject this last thought here, then we'll move on to another match here. Uh, but both Raw and SmackDown have a women's title. I don't think there's enough talent mm -hmm. for a Raw and SmackDown title. Combine mm -hmm. those, have one champ, let her go both shows and work it that way. That way you have more people chasing one person and then really brings up a star. So you maybe have somebody who, not a Charlotte, not a Bailey, not somebody younger, somebody, an Ember Moon or somebody like that, hold the title mm. and really build a character up and build, uh, yeah. you know, a star in that division. I kind of and like it. someone said earlier, this shows the importance. It's hard to believe because she hasn't been around wrestling long at all, but just the talent that she has is how important Ronda Rousey really was. Yeah. And well, you like drop her, you know, she goes away or whatever she's doing and hopefully comes back at some point. She signed a three-year deal, and I guess that's <laughs> over her lifetime, apparently. But uh, <laughs> if she comes back, that interjects a lot of energy into it and gives you, you know, hard to believe. Once again, they say she picked it up like Kurt Angle did, which is quite the compliment. She still needs mic work, of course, as, as we've all talked about, I'm sure. But her in-ring talent is quite incredible for the short amount of time that she's done it. So she's, you know, a lot of people wanted her to go away, but boy, now that she's gone, they want her back real bad. If you follow anybody on Twitter, you see her name a lot of, please come back and help us. It's like, Oh, interesting. Okay. You wanted her gone not long ago, but as we know, WWE fans are fickle, 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 fickle. Yes, so. yes they are. So you're saying mm -hmm. she picked up wrestling like uh, Mo Money Keith Gibson. You know what? Nobody can pick it up that fast, well, uh, but she's I just close. couldn't pick up a leapfrog to save my life. Brought broke my neck. Ridiculous. See, I'm lucky to be walking right now because of you. <laughs> Man, you don't have a broken back from body slamming me 35 times, but you're right. <laughs> torn bicep. <laughs> uh, my thought is, guys, I think you go to one one champ uh, for the women, and, and honestly, I think you go to one for the men too. But we'll get in that a little bit later. So let's move on. The other pre-show match of the evening, um, and for some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, but Buddy Murphy is going one on one against. Uh, just drew a blank. Let me look it up. Narge, who, who, who's he going? Paulo Cruz. Paulo Cruz. See, that's why we have you here. <laughs> uh, mm. Paulo Cruz. So tell me, gentlemen, where the story for this comes from, or is it something to set up something later in the evening? I, I think we're setting up something else. I'm not sure there's a story. Murphy's involved right now with the Roman, Daniel Bryan angle, mm. and I think he's more involved than they're letting on. Um, I think they've got big plans for Murphy. At some point, and this is just this is to get him on the screen. He hasn't been on since he's been drafted, um, so I think tonight's just the start of something. We're going to see a whole lot more Buddy Murphy in the next couple of weeks. Shane, yeah, what he said, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, <me> your thoughts? <laughs> uh, pass, pass. pass. <laughs> yeah. So let's pick yeah. a winner, shall we? <laughs> I'll take Murphy with a drop kick. Get that drop kick, Murphy's. Drop kick, Murphy's. <laughs> hey, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. Narge, ah, uh, Murphy. If Narge is taking Murphy, I'm taking Murphy. Sam. Charlie Murphy. That's what I'm taking. <laughs> Charlie Murphy. All right. Then we'll get into the, the actual card of uh, SummerSlam, which starts uh, this evening at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, mm -hmm. We'll start with one of them that I, I think WWE expected a lot more from. It won't open the show, of course. We don't know what will open the show. But Goldberg's coming back tonight to face Dolph Ziggler. And, Sammy, you and I have talked about this a little bit on the Behind the Mic show, uh, the last episode, episode 14, available on Apple, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Um, you said, and, and I quote, the debacle, this is a makeup for the debacle that happened with The Undertaker, correct? Yes, yes. Big word that I used, and you liked it. Yes, so, yes, uh, they gave The Undertaker a chance to kind of make up for that, didn't want to leave a bad taste in his mouth, and he did. Uh, that was actually a 
he looked great in that. So it makes you wonder if he's got more coming or if that was kind of like, hey, I did well, let me go home. So I think they're doing the same thing for Goldberg. And um, believe it or not, I, well, I hate to say this, it may be a squash match, maybe over in 30 seconds. But I, you know, I don't know if Dolph Ziggler pissed off the wrong people or what. But it might be a really good match. That's one of those toss-ups that they might put on a heck of a show because Dolph Ziggler can make anybody look good. So, uh, you know, it may work out really well. I, I don't know, but it may be over in 30 seconds, so who knows. But, uh, but it, should, it's, it got people interested. You saw the crowd reaction when Goldberg came out on Monday night. I was kind of surprised by that. I thought he might get booed or not really have much reaction at all after, you know, what happened, you know, in Saudi Arabia. But a uh, big pop. And so we'll see. It got, at least it got a big name uh, for people to kind of be interested a little bit in SummerSlam because there hasn't been a ton of interest. So, so you're taking Goldberg or Ziggler in this match? Oh, Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. Shane, what's yeah, your thoughts on Goldberg no, coming back? There's no way in my mind that, that Goldberg doesn't go over here in this match. Um, and I totally agree. And, I, and I'm on board with the, uh, with the, with the thought process of this is, this is a, a Saudi Arabia makeup, you know, um, cause that was just a brutal, mm-hmm. brutal, uh, you know, uh, match, uh, for two guys that are, well, Goldberg's never been known for his in-ring skills, but, uh, at the same time, he's, he's, you know, guy that knows what he's doing at the same time. But, um, uh, yeah, you know, I, what I'm more interested in is kind of what, what Sam was just saying. Is this a squash match or is this more of a something that's kind of drawn out? Because I can kind of say that, say that going either way, but, man, I just feel for a guy like Dolph Ziggler who just <laughs> works his tail off and, and finds himself in these types of uh, matches where it's mm-hmm. just a no-win scenario. But, uh, but you know, Goldberg uh, for the win. Narge? Uh, yeah, I think – it could go one of two ways. I've read and heard numerous rumors that this is the start of Goldberg, a uh, big push for WrestleMania, that Goldberg's going to be including oh. WrestleMania this year. Um, oh. With that being said, uh, you, there could be an argument that Ziggler could go over. I don't see it happening. I think Goldberg's got too much uh, ego in himself. I think I think Goldberg goes over tonight. I do think we see Shawn Michaels get involved, though. I agree. At mm. some point. So we're going to get a little nostalgia act, you know, feel-good act tonight for sure. Maybe a super kick that goes wrong that was meant for someone else, perhaps? That's possible. Uh, mm-hmm. there, we we could build to Goldberg and Shawn Michaels. Uh, you know, I was thinking – funny you say that. You actually, Sam, made me change my mind because I'm thinking Shawn gets in and super kicks Dolph. But I think uh. – yeah, I think we could build the Goldberg and Shawn Michaels. Yep. So that's possible. Because here's that. here's the deal, and you guys know this to be true. Yes, we want to see these new wrestlers, but you know it's coming. They're going to give us some two big names from the past, even though they should both quit by now. You know, but they've still got it in them. Shawn Michaels still looks good. Can still, I'm sure he can still go when he needs to. Goldberg can still go if he can avoid, you know, ramming his head into a, you know, corner post would help. Uh, but uh, but that could be a big time match for WrestleMania, believe it or not. You know, so yeah, I could see that happening. I'm gonna take Ziggler. Ooh, the upset. I think. Uh, what's that? The upset. Yeah, the upset. I'm gonna take Ziggler, and and I think Ziggler's been back. He goes back and forth, but he just puts everybody over, and I think they're gonna they're gonna let him. Goldberg's gonna put him over tonight. I really do. Push the younger mm-hmm. guy. And I think there's a story here that builds for either Survivor Series or, or all the way to Mania. I can't see WWE building a story for Mania this far out, just because of their trends. But um, I, I'm gonna take Ziggler tonight. Okay. All right. Moving on. United States Championship match also this evening. The phenomenal AJ Styles, mm-hmm. and one of Sammy's favorite new guys, also from Paducah, Kentucky. That's right. Ricochet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Styles comes back with the club. Reform the club. They're the tag team champs now, which aren't on the pay-per-view, aren't on SummerSlam. Um, but Styles and Ricochet have put on some great matches on Raw. Uh, Narge, we'll start with you. What's your take on this, on the United States Championship match? I think we're going to get another great match tonight. Both guys can go. Um, too soon for AJ to drop the belt. I think AJ goes over again tonight. They're going to build Ricochet up as that underdog, I think. He's yep. going to be the new the new guy to be chasing the belt for a while. So. Mm-hmm. Jane, uh, I'm actually taking Ricochet. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he seems like, you know, uh, you know, one, one of the new faces maybe that's getting some sort of a push, uh, but more so than anything else, I just don't think it's a it's. It may not be a title that that AJ needs, you know, a whole lot, um, and um, I, I just don't see, I just don't see what, what what type of program they're gonna, you know, outside of you know this this whole Ricochet angle that they're gonna they're gonna run with him with the. Uh, with, with that belt. So I'll take, I'll take Ricochet. Sam, well, 
I, I think I'm going to go opposite. No offense to our other person on here, but I just think uh, with AJ, I mean, I just think he's still such a huge name. I think they're going to slowly, you know, I know Rick and Shea got the belt for a little bit, but you've seen how long that lasted. I think it's still building him up slowly, like like they just said, kind of make him, you know, the baby face that, you know, tries to defeat all the odds. And then maybe at WrestleMania, you might see him and AJ, you know, go again. They, that's a story they could tell for a long time. Think of the matches you could have. Just letting those two just tell a story and take their time. Why not? You know, I mean, two incredible athletes. And, and then by WrestleMania, maybe we have a ladder match or something like that between those two, which would be absolutely incredible. Um, so I, I hope that they let AJ keep it for a while. And, and once again, as they just said, let Ricochet come so close, but then he gets, you know, screwed over somehow or whatever. Let AJ become a really big full-time heel and uh, just kind of tell that story for a while. I think this match actually steals the show tonight. Oh, okay. Okay. So it certainly could be, uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the uh, one you look at right now as we're doing this preview, like what might be the best match on the show. Yep. For sure. This might be the one. Right. Well, I will take AJ because I think the club gets involved. I think they keep it on there to build the club. Um, before we came on air and, and recording the podcast today, Narge and I were talking a little bit about what could happen, you know, come Survivor Series. You have a, a group in NXT, the Undisputed Era, which would be perfect with the club to, to go at it one-on-one. -on -one. So I think you keep the belt on AJ and make them look really strong uh, moving forward after tonight. Cool. Yep. So the next match we have, a gentleman uh, on the card, is a man who shouldn't be on the card, period. <laughs> Uh, Shane McMahon, McMahon. Yeah. yeah, Shane McMahon, yeah, exactly. uh, you guys know what I was talking about, okay, who's got way too much TV time, but he's going to face Kevin Owens, and if Owens loses, he's got to quit, he's got to go away, um, uh, thoughts on this whole angle, and thoughts on Shane McMahon getting way too much, I mean, in my opinion, way too much TV time, way too much spotlight taken away from guys who they could put in here and build, right, anybody? I'll go first. Yeah, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna throw it back. I don't know if anybody remembers. I think Shane takes it tonight. Shane's gonna win. It's career versus career, right? I believe mm -hmm. whoever loses. Uh, years ago, Brian Pillman and Barry Windham did an angle, and uh, Brian Pillman lost. He came back as the Yellow Dog. I don't know if anybody remembers that. He was under a mask. <laughs> and did it for about two, three months. Yellow Dog. And mm. I think we're gonna get Kevin Owens under a mask. Maybe a Lucha character down the road. Kevin's got some comedy in him, so. I think Shane goes over tonight, and we're going to get uh, some weird stuff going forward from Owens or whoever. You like Owens as a baby face. I love Owens as a baby face. I love him as a heel. Yeah, I'm like either Owens or all yeah, around. So great, needs a push. Yeah, Owens is money. Yep. Yep. Yeah. He could go. Uh, he can. Yeah. He could really work both. Uh, you know, uh, face or heel. Again, he's he's equally good. I mean, I really like that post WrestleMania where he was the Big E fill in the New Day. After that was some of his. Uh, I thought that was really good stuff. He's also great at being a. This, you know, just an annoying heel too. So, um, you know, yeah, this storyline, yeah, the whole McMahon too much TV time is one that really kind of eats at me because, um, I mean, it, it's almost like bad heat, right? It's it's uh, what do they call it, X-Pac heat, you know, where it's yeah. like fans are just they're, they're they're booing you for the not the reasons you wanted to boo you, and I just it just I, I just don't, it don't do they get that or not? I don't know, but uh, you know. I, I, I'm 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 gonna root hard for whatever might get me less Shane McMahon in the role that he's in. So give me KO all day long and uh, hope that it goes away. Sammy, yeah, I'm gonna go with KO too. I think the McMahon thing is definitely played out. I think Shane as well. I mean, it just seems like he he's put in a lot of time. I think it's time for him to step away for a while or maybe go behind the scenes. I, it's definitely played played out. We get it. Yeah, you're showing us you're gonna be on TV regardless. I know what the whole story is, of course. You know, obviously, KO's trying to get him off TV, but I can't imagine them bringing KO back in a mask. They might. You never know, WWE, flip a coin. Uh, but uh, he's just so talented that you'd hate to see him go away from TV for a while. He's the one one of the good things that SmackDown's had going for a while. Uh, so you definitely want – he needs a push. For the love of God, can Kevin Owens get a push? <laughs> I mean, what more do you want? He's, per he's probably the best on the mic they have. Is there anybody else that's better on the mic right now in WWE than him? I, I it'd be maybe the Miz would be the only guy. Maybe the Miz, right? So yeah, so he's way up there, you know, and he's so good in the ring as well. He can do it all. Doesn't look like he could even walk down the street, but somehow he puts on an incredible show in the ring. Very athletic. So uh, I mean, give the guy a push and get him going, you know. So oh, hopefully gonna, they they have him go over. I'm gonna I'm gonna go against my doppelganger uh, this evening, <laughs> and I'm gonna take Shane as well because I think Drew McIntyre. 
uh, gets involved, helps Shane, either him or Elias, and sets up a program with KO, which I don't think KO actually goes away. Um, you know what I'm? You know what I'm going to? I'm going to call another prediction here. Are you ready? Okay. You, you ready for this? Since it's SummerSlam, since it's a biggie, right? Who uh, has been all over TV lately pushing his new show coming up, and who? was on Raw Reunion not too long ago and blew the roof off the place. Who was that? Austin. Uh-huh. Who says he doesn't come in and they're, you know, screwing K over? Who says he doesn't just drop a couple people with a couple? Because look how – how did how did Austin look, by the way? Pretty good. And, good shape. Uh, uh-huh. And who's using Austin's uh, finishing say. move? Yep. yep. All right. So who says that this – maybe we don't get an Austin come in and help out, you know, because it looks like he's getting screwed. He's up against the odds, you know. Obviously, you get a big boot from McIntyre, all that. And let's say Austin doesn't just drop him and leave Shane laying, and then Kevin gets the pin, and Austin gets to screw over a McMahon again. So that great. place would lose its mind. Lose I might lose mind my mind if that happens. I know you would. You you probably be yeah, all dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> yep. Yep. That'd be awesome. <laughs> all right, so we got two and two on that one. Two KO. I'm uh, two Shane on that one. All right, moving on to the SmackDown Women's Championship and Sam's favorite uh, women's wrestler, Bailey. Oh. <laughs> Taking on the up and coming, the former NXT women's champion, Ember Moon, who I like a lot. I do too. Sam, I, I don't even really need to ask you who you're taking in this one, do I? Yeah, I, I, it's got to be Ember Moon, right? I mean, here, guys, you've been watching wrestling for years, okay? Long time. If you're a baby face like Bailey is, did you notice in the last SmackDown where she just clotheslined Ember Moon out of nowhere? I know it was a little payback, but do they really do you really want your baby faces doing that and looking like you're sneaking up from behind on somebody and doing that? That just didn't make much sense to me. Did it to you guys at all? No, not unless they're, I mean, unless they were going to push the heel angle and then I, the one week she turned on her, the next week she was, you know, back to a face again. So it doesn't make right. a lot of sense. Yeah. Pick a direction and go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Decide with her. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. No, yeah, but no, I think Ember Moon's extremely talented and, uh, I think it's time for something new there. So I'll go with her. I like both ladies. I agree with Sam. Ember, uh, long overdue for a push. I know she got mm-hmm. hurt there for a little while. Um, I'm going to go with Bailey. I think, I think she keeps the title, though. Bailey, uh, she's, she's one of the ones they're pushing. Um, she's marketable, a little more than Ember, just the hugger and all that. Uh, could, we see a, could we see a heel turn tonight? Maybe. I think Bailey's long overdue for that. Too much of the, the cheering. So yeah. I'd, I'd love to. I I don't know that I mean I, I agree she probably needs something but man could she work at a heel I don't know uh, I'm gonna take Bailey here also but here's what I'm I'm kind of intrigued by is some some recent reports that talk about maybe an imminent return of Sasha Banks and does Ooh. she come into this match somehow some way either one to maybe cost Bailey a shot or B uh, kind of reunite maybe you know after a win kind of doing the pose and maybe like sneak attack her to kind of set up a, a program for Survivor Series so. Uh, I'll take cool. Bailey, but I, I kind of think at some point you're going to see Sasha Banks, and it might be here. I, She's been I, gone for a long ready, time. So yeah, that would be ready to go there, and Sasha's one of my favorites. She's tiny, too, a little tiny thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> wipe your chin. PG, Keith, PG. I'm going to take, take that Sasha. Sasha actually costs Bailey the title and sets up a program, because I don't think either woman actually needs the belt to have a good program. So I'm going to take Moon, and that way they can move on with Moon and get her a new challenger and something fresh. Okay. So I like moving that. on. Of course you do. It came from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, coming up, we get to see the, I guess you would call it a re-debut of Bray Wyatt as The Fiend, oh. which has been an absolutely <laughs> phenomenal um, leading up to this, and he gets Finn Balor. So my first question uh, of the two before you make your pick, will we see the Demon? And what's your over-under? Let's say uh, I'll, go, I'll go five and a half minutes. What's your over-under? How long this match will last? And who you got? Sammy. Okay. Uh, I don't think we see the Demon. I think uh, I've read a lot where Balor's taken some time off. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't really want to uh, – and once again, and I know it's supposed to be one of the big four, blah, 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 but WrestleMania is the biggest of all. So wouldn't it be better to – instead of – because the Demon's never been beaten, correct? So do you really want to do this at SummerSlam, you know, and then he – and then now you lose that. You know, that could be something you save for Mania where you get the Fiend versus the Demon, which would be really cool. Uh, so I think uh, the Fiend does end up winning, and I will say it goes – you know what? I think they're really going to extremely push Bray. Obviously, that's what this has been building to and how it's caught fire. 
and I think you need to make him look dominant tonight. So get it over with quickly and uh, go from there. So, yeah, he's going to look very dominant tonight and win it and move on and really catch fire. You're taking the under five and a half minutes? Yep. Okay, so I'll take the over. I'll take the over. But, um, uh, but yeah, you don't build up Bray Wyatt like this, like you have for the no. weeks as you have, and have him come in and lose a match. So, nope, if he loses, it's over already. So yeah. what's the point? And I have, I've kind of read some of those same things about uh, maybe Finn taking some time off, and I, I think Sammy's looking at my paper. And taking my notes because <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing with the with the uh, with the with the you know bringing out the uh, uh, bringing out the demon uh, with Finn Balor. I think that makes way more sense, like in a WrestleMania type match, as opposed to uh, especially if you're going to be off TV for a little while. Um, I think that sets up a good, almost like you can almost do the, the the roles in reverse. Like he, you know, obviously Finn Balor doesn't have a, a Firefly Funhouse type of a, uh, a vignette to play, but like he could almost kind of. Through the role of the demon, kind of you know, you know, set up a set up a return after taking whatever length of time he's taken off uh, on his return. So I'll take I'll take Bray for those uh, and then the over. Wyatt and over. Yeah. Narch. Uh, no demon. I think Wyatt's going to get it done pretty quick. It's going to be under. Uh, they have to build this character, and to do that, he needs to come out and he needs to squash Finn Balor. And I'll be honest, I think this is the end of the feud. I'm watching a little bit of the pre-show behind Keith here. And they're showing the club hanging with Finn, and I think that's where we go. Finn's coming back. Oh. He's going to be a heel. Um, if Keith and he I are that. right, we're going to see the club in Undisputed Era at Survivor Series. Yes. That could be the main event. Right Which would there. be awesome. Which would be absolutely mm -hmm. awesome. If you talk about guys who could work, Yeah, that would be one heck of a main event. I'm going to take Wyatt, and I'm going to take uh, the under, uh, just because I think it is a squash, and I think uh, it's, it's the end we'll see of Finn for a while. So moving on, and I, uh, and I hopefully with Wyatt before we move on. Hopefully with Wyatt, they really let him continue doing what he's doing and develop this and the split personality and maybe one match we see just Bray Wyatt, you know, as his you know host doing his wrestling and then the Fiend and then who knows tonight? You don't know. You might see them both. They might flip. Flat. You never know. How great would that be? You know, That'd be awesome. They really need to keep pushing that. So I hope they continue that and don't screw this one up like they've done everything else. So. So let's talk um, a non-title women's match. Uh, actually, it's not even a title involved, but the return of one of Sam's favorites, I'm sure all oh. of ours, Chris Stratus. <laughs> yeah. He looks phenomenal at her age, uh, coming back to wrestle uh, in mm -hmm. Toronto, Canada, her mm -hmm. hometown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to do a five-second pose, if you're listening to the podcast, go right ahead. <laughs> um, but this is Charlotte Flair uh, tonight, and is Trish, uh, gentlemen, my, my big question is, we know Trish will get a big pop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how long will this actually go, and how how good will it look? To, I'm a, I'm gonna rephrase that. Let me. Let me no, it'll look good. <laughs> yeah, it'll look good. Uh, how well will the match great. go? Yeah, just, you know. How well will the match go with someone who hasn't been in the ring in a while against someone who was in Charlotte Flair who can put on a great show? Sure. And Charlotte, who got Charlotte's going to carry the match tonight for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Trish, I think, let it be known, this is a retirement match. So I think Trish goes out uh, looking at the lights. I think she's on her back. She's going to get that big baby pop at the oh. end. Um, Who doesn't like that? <laughs> Charlotte Flair all night long. <laughs> hey, if you're going to do it, do it with Flair. Shane. Yeah, I, uh, Flair. I mean, um, uh, outside of the the outside of the match being in Toronto, you can't really, in my opinion, come up with any any reason why why Flair wouldn't win. Um, but uh, yeah, retirement match. You know, yeah, go out on your back. Would you like to have her on her back and do the job? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> on her back Sorry. doing the job. Would you like? To, is that how Trish Strass is going to go out? I, you know what, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, but <laughs> what I will say is, um, <laughs> is I do think that uh, Flair definitely goes over this, and I hope they would do it. Uh, like we used to old school see it whenever somebody was in their hometown and Flair, after she wins the match, does an absolute beat down on her and gets heat that she can use going forward as an ultimate heel. Beat her within an inch of her life, you know, as they do in wrestling, and really draw some heat. Maybe she gets saved by, oh, let's say uh, the Glamazon or something like that, an old friend of hers. And maybe they have a couple matches going forward. You know, something like that where they could really build on something. But get Flair that – you could get some serious heat in Toronto if she – turns that nasty and, you know, hits her with some chairs and, you know, things like that. So I just think that'd be kind of cool if they would do something like that. I agree. I agree. I'll take Flair as well or Flair across the board. Mm -hmm. To be the woman, you got to beat the woman, right? That's right. 
Nobody right. likes to beat a woman. <laughs> no. <laughs> so moving on, all right, we got three matches to go. Um, Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton. Kofi, one of those guys who have held the title here uh, for a little while now. Orton, an old nemesis. Coming back, I actually think this match is going to – Sammy, you said earlier, AJ Ricochet is going to steal the show. This is my match that will steal the show tonight. I think this is going to be one of the best matches on the card. Um, I, I will take, actually, the Kofi dropping the title tonight to Orton. That's my prediction. Okay. Yeah, I've read, I've read uh, some online stuff that kind of suggests that might be the direction it's going. I, and I don't um, – Kofi has to drop it somewhere. And I don't – I just don't like Randy Orton as my champion. I've never been a big nope. Orton guy. Um, nope. Uh, I think his time has passed. I think he, he's still a good hand and still a good worker. Uh, I don't think he gets the the legend pop like some of the other guys maybe in his uh, – you know, kind of – I don't know. I, I just think his act is, is worn thin. It's the same character you've seen for the last 10 years, you know. 20. Uh, yeah, however long it's been. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to root for Kofi to, to retain it and look for a better program for him to drop it. But, you know, some of the online things that make me – Make you think that uh, so you take him. I'm gonna take Kofi, but okay, it's a it's it's not it's not very confident that pick. Narge, um, this and I disagree. With, this is the one match I don't care about at all tonight. Mm -hmm. They they're rehashing something from forever ago. Mm -hmm. Build up I thought was ah. Uh, I think Kofi keeps the belt. I've I've heard opposite rumors. I heard that Kofi could hold it all the way to Mania. That they really enjoy having him. He's the New Day's uh, merchandise machine. So you can just mm -hmm. keep plugging out pancakes and cereal and whatever you want until <laughs> WrestleMania. Eventually, I'll be honest, I think this is kind of getting off track, but I think Big E needs to turn. Big E's yeah. the guy uh, who needs to run. Yeah. And I think he's uh, the one that should huh. toss Kofi the belt. I will say the one piece of this match I thought was actually uh, really interesting was the fact they actually did go back and touch on uh, their feud from like 2010 because that was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was born out of a botch, right? Where yeah. he might have missed a spot and Orton starts yelling at him in the ring and it's obviously everything's on camera and you can see everything you need to, but the fact that they even go back kind of acknowledging that as part of this story, I thought was at least added you know, some bit of interest to it, but it yeah. helped. That was yeah. about the only thing, yeah. though. Not much else. And that, it, like I said, it was interesting just more the fact that WWE as a company touched on it more so than the fact that these two competitors are, are wrestling. Right. Sammy, who you got tonight? You know, I, I think, sadly, we might see the belt change, and I, I agree with what was said earlier. Orton is a very boring champion. He just is a great worker, but there's just nothing to him besides, you know, the arrogance, and it's not a good arrogance. It's not even something you can, you know, laugh at. Right? It's just kind of like, eh, you know, it's – I don't know. I just never have been – I mean, I think Orton's a great wrestler, but I just never have gotten into him um, due to the lack of personality, really. And, uh, but I could see, you know, does Big E turn tonight? You can see it's coming at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So is it tonight? Is it, I mean, you know, Kofi's held it a lot longer than I thought they were going to let him to, let, let, let him keep it anyway. But I could see Orton winning tonight. Well, that's, that's uh, definitely split there, split two coasts, two Orton. So we'll move on to uh, our final couple matches of the evening. Uh, submission match for the Raw Women's title, Becky Lynch versus Natalia. And I know we're going to have a lot of things to say on this. Because there are a lot of different ways this match can go. Sure. Um, I, I will throw out my first pick. I'm going to tell you right now, I, th I think Natalia comes out the champ. I'm going to let Sam tell you why. Go ahead, because I think we're on the same page with this one. I think we are. That's because out of nowhere, here comes her old buddy Ronda Rousey, and I think she helps her win. I think that will get a huge pop from the crowd. Of course, once again, we're in Toronto. You know, you, you never know. Are they going to be big Becky Lynch fans tonight? Or are they going to be, you know, cheering for the hometown girl? But I do think Ronda Rousey shows up. I think she plays a part in it. I think she costs Becky. And I think that helps with a feud going forward. And it also kind of gets us going more towards that four horsewomen, doesn't it? If you have Becky without the title, maybe her and Flair, they partnered up there. Of course, they, obviously that didn't go well because Flair walked off. But still, you know, it just makes you wonder if we're going to get that four horsewomen thing at the next WrestleMania as well. But I do think Ronda's going to jump in and help out. It's, it's going to uh, get Natalia with the belt. Definitely needs to change because I'm so sick of Becky Lynch. I could puke. You know. <laughs> How do you really feel about Becky Lynch? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm, and I swear to God, the next person that compares her to Stone Cold Steve Austin, I'm going to kick in the face. I can't stand it. <laughs> Disrespect is what that is. I'll give you a break. <laughs> so, Shane, what do you got? Yeah, this is a tough one because, like you said, there's just so many different ways you can go. I mean, I, I, I'm totally bought into the fact that Rousey's showing up in some, some way somehow in this match. But I – and I – you know, I, I do, and I think this the the build up there is for something at Survivor Series because they were supposed to have a match last year. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, 
um, yeah, I, I, total toss up. Um, I don't know that I don't know that Becky drops the belt tonight. Um, so I'm going to take Becky, but I have no idea how they're going to end it. But I'm going to I'm going to say they're going to keep it on Becky. I'm going to agree with Sam. I like it. We talked. He talked early in the show about a big surprise tonight, and we mm-hmm. threw out Austin and Sasha. And you might get Sasha. I don't know if we'll get Austin. I think Ronda's the big surprise. She's coming out. And she's going to lay a beat down on the man, which I've never gotten either. I agree with Sam. The steampunk yeah. thing, the man thing. Never been yeah. a Becky Lynch fan at all. Nope. Um, always a Ronda fan. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think tonight I think Natalia gets that big pop. I don't know how long she'll hold the belt. She's in Canada. They're, they're going to give her the hey. rub, I think. So. Yeah, so, or, I mean, you could see you could see Ronda come out where it looks like she's going to help Natalia, and she may drop her instead. And then Becky keeps the belt, and then Ronda has turned heel now, as she was doing anyway before she left. You know, I mean, they were working on that anyway. But if you want somebody that's, especially on the women's side, that's a true badass that can really carry that, she doesn't have to talk. Give her Paul Heyman, give her something like that, and just let her go and kick the absolute living hell out of every woman that comes in the ring. That builds something up, you know. Oh. I, but they never do that, right? Because that could have been your you – know, you remember whenever she put Alexi Bliss through the table before she had the title? Yeah. No. That night on Raw, I mean, yeah. people lost their minds and people were just going crazy for that. And then they just dropped the ball on that, too. So it's like, well, OK, you know, so but I do I do think she's coming back tonight. I do think it's going to make a, a big difference. So we'll see. I'll throw this out there real quick, just as a side that Bret Hart is in Toronto and he was at the SummerSlam little rally this weekend. So I think we see Bret Hart tonight. It's been all over the place Did AEW a couple months back. Uh, the place would explode if Brett comes out. That's why th- another reason I think Natty wins. Brett comes out at the end to congratulate her. We're going to get that feel good. Oh, the family moment, yes. Um, and if you think about it too, Natalia lost her dad not too long ago, which was tragic, of course. So this kind of makes it come full circle. She wins the title in their hometown, and yes, everybody, yes, right, stroking the goatee. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yes, I, I think that would be a you know, like you said, a kind of a cool family moment. Everybody in Toronto feels good. Are are they main eventing? No. No. Yeah, no, our main event this might. evening is our next match. We're the final okay. one of the evening for our picks. And then we'll wrap up everything here on the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable. Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, a rematch uh, um, from, uh, I don't know how many times they've wrestled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brock got one of the title Extreme Rules, cashing in Money in the Bank. I still thought it was too soon for that. But now you get Brock and Seth again uh, as a main event. I'm going to call uh, – here's my – actually, I'll listen to you guys first, and I'll give you my take on it. But I'll I, I just tell you this. I don't think it's going to last long. Yeah. I, uh, you know, put me in the uh, – as you guys were, you know, uh, talk about the women's match and, you know, not being you know, big Becky Lynch. I, same that, – that's me with Brock here. Him holding the title. Mm. Uh, almost uh, – I mean, you know who he is. You know what – I mean, I, anyway. Um, but what do, you, what do you do from a storyline perspective? I, I think it uh, – I think it's – you know, historically, it was you know when he had the belt for so long and, and rarely making appearances, it was just not a good thing. Um, but I, I think he keeps the belt. But I just I'm more you know I guess my my interest here in this match it's like where you go, where do you go next? You know, what's your next opponent? Um, what's his what's his build for summer uh, for summer saying for Survivor Series? Um, if there is any type of uh, thought process with that already, but uh, yeah, Brock wins a title. But yeah, I. I'm 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 not I'm more excited to hear about the undercard than, than come up here to this main event final match. Who knows why I'm be awake, but yeah. <laughs> Sammy, who you got? Uh I mean, who cares? You know, between these two, it's like my God, how many times do we have to see it? You know, and plus it's just not this is where I get like with the two oh five live and all that, is you know, the little bitty guys and all that stuff. So you got a little bitty guy and Seth Rollins isn't a little bitty, I get it, but compared to Brock Lesnar, it's like at least make it believable, you know, make it somewhat where there's a chance. And Seth Rollins is a good wrestler, but they have totally screwed him up. They made him the man's man. Now you expect me to believe he's going to beat Brock Lesnar. It's like you made him Becky Lynch's bitch. Bleep that out if you need to. (laughs) It's all right. I don't care. Okay. How can you expect me to believe he's going to beat a monster like Brock Lesnar, which by the way, he's actually been on TV for quite a bit for him. Anyway, so he's actually doing his job and, and anything with Paul Heyman's gold. But, yeah, I don't see – I mean, if Rollins wins it back, I mean, why? You know what? So we can watch him and Becky Lynch grab each other's butts in the ring. Yay. You know, that was the dumbest thing I've seen in forever. It's like, man, you need to go home for a while or something, figure something out, you know. But, but no, I see Lesnar winning uh, pretty easily, really, overall. I don't see this lasting too long. 
And uh, I think there might be a little twist at the end just to build going forward. I'm just going to leave it at that. Just okay. a little twist. Mm -hmm. Uh, I agree with Sam. There's going to be a twist, but I think it's going to be the opposite way. I think Seth takes it tonight. And I'm, I'm a big Rollins fan. I'm not a big fan of the man's man or him and mm -hmm. Becky. Again, Be Becky involved with anything I don't like. So <laughs> just have to be back. We'll hear a lot of negative Becky stuff. But mm -hmm. I think Seth takes it. And the reason I do, they're building towards this big Fox debut. Fox wants all the big names. And Brock, there's no bigger name than Brock Lesnar. That's right. He wins the belt tonight. I don't see him taking that belt to SmackDown and Fox. So I think. Something happens tonight, we're going to build something to Brock. It may not be long-term. You know, you talked about The Undertaker. Do we see mm -hmm. Undertaker and Brock again? I don't know. What do you do on that debut episode of Fox? You're going to want to have Brock and somebody. So mm -hmm. where, where do we go with that? Well, and I could see this. I, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyway. Why not? Just to see if, I, if I'm right. Of course, we throw out a lot of predictions, and obviously if, we're, if we get 20% of them right, then we're, we're geniuses, right? Is that how it works when you're an analyst, right? Is that 60% of the time it working? works every time, Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'd say we're more like analysts than analysts. But uh -huh. so anyway, uh, so <laughs> I think since that uh, Bray Wyatt-Balor uh, match is uh, going to be a quick one, we all kind of believe that for the main thing. I think maybe at the end, if, if he's – because obviously Balor's going away, so that storyline – and I believe uh, someone there said that that may be it for those two, you know, going forward anyway. Who says we don't see The Fiend at the end if let's Lesnar wins or something like that and just – it starts it up. Not necessarily get involved like physically, <laughs> but something, you know, where the lights start to shut down and maybe you see him on the stage for a little bit and then he, uh, then he goes away and the lights come back on and Brock's like, what the hell is that? And that's how the show ends. So that gives you something going forward. And, boy, what a WrestleMania match that would be. So that'd be pretty well, cool. I think I think Brock retains. Uh, I think it's a quick squash um, of Rollins, which I think it needs to be. I think Rollins, you may see him kind of fade back a little bit as well mm -hmm. after this, which needs to happen as well. But I do think there's going to be some at the end, and there better be because this is not a stack card. It's not a whole lot. This isn't a great main event, so you better come up with something strong at the end and not just have yep. Lesnar and Heyman stand in the ring because that's going to leave a lot of people upset. Well, and it's a shame because Rollins is a phenomenal talent. I agree with what was just said. He's great, but the way they've done him the last few months is like, what are you doing to this man? Are you trying to kill his career? Because it's made him look weak. It's made him look pathetic. I mean, even with DX, it was terrible. It's like, man, what are you doing to this guy? This is not helping him at all. So I don't have Cena. What's that? <laughs> they don't have Cena. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he takes a break for a while after this and kind of recharges his batteries, maybe goes in a new direction of something to where because he was, he was hot for a while. I mean, he was big time and doing well and uh, was really going over with the crowd. And now it's just kind of me, yeah. you know. Yep. So, uh, so hopefully he comes back with something new. So my, the last thing we're going to talk about, then we're going to close the show today. That way we can get it up and loaded for everybody here before SummerSlam officially starts at 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, but Roman Reigns not on the card tonight. First time in a very long time. Reigns hasn't been on the card. Especially since he came back from leukemia. Uh, what do you see his role tonight? Does he make an appearance somewhere in the show? I think so. We're going to get a backstage segment with him. Daniel Bryan and Rowan aren't on the show. They teased that last week. You're going to get Samoa Joe. They're all going to be involved somehow. Um, Joe, I don't know if anybody caught, you know, after the car wreck thing on Monday, Joe kind of came to Roman's aid. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll get a tag match down the road. Maybe the Samoans against uh, Rowan and Bryan, but they're leading to something. I think we'll get a backstage segment. You know, WWE loves their backstage stuff. Yes, they so. do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There, uh, there'll be something backstage. There wasn't too much um, kind of written about in terms of storyline and, you know, uh, like in recaps, just about the whole, you know, <laughs> who killed Roman uh, type thing, <laughs> but uh, story that they've been trying to tell. And, and I, 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 I really hated the reveal um, on, on SmackDown. And I just maybe hope there's another layer to that story that maybe they'll, they'll do in a segment tonight. But they'll be on the show, obviously, not, not, in, a, not, not, in, a, not, in, a, not in an announced match, but there'll be, there'll be something. Sammy? Yeah, and I think uh, something backstage like you guys are talking, and maybe those two are talking, and then I think uh, who walks up but the Usos as long as the other one stays out of well, jail with the DUI. Well, but, speaking uh, of, they, they aren't there tonight, Sammy. They couldn't get their visas to work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's what happens when you can't sit on the back of a cop car and you can't stay uh, <laughs> off the bottom. Eventually they take that visa, don't they? Good yes. God almighty. Wow. Yes. Well, so we won't, you, you won't see the so Usos. <laughs> I don't think we'll see the Usos. No, I think they're so, in their own uh, penitentiary. But I do like Joe with Roman. If they could get that going, man, I think if you could get a faction going, 
you know, and if you could ever get the Usos, because they're very talented. I like to watch them in the ring. I think they're very good. But if you could get a faction, the four of those together, like a big Samoan group like that, man, they could be badasses. That could be yeah. really cool going forward. It'd be neat to see something different, you know, something new. And I'd love so, to see more Joe, too, because he's a – Yep, you can't he, go wrong with Joe. I, yep. He's a guy I really enjoy, and I just don't – I keep waiting for him to find a good program for him, and, and maybe something like that would be it. All right, final yep. thoughts, Jim. We'll go around the table, final thoughts, and we'll wrap up the show. Uh, Sam, let's start with you. Final thought on SummerSlam and the, and the Chance and Chumps podcast. I think that uh, – I hope – I've been very underwhelmed, but as we've talked about it, I'm thinking this might be a really good show. So I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. I didn't have much hope, but after we talked about it, I do think it's going to be – uh, so, and I do think, of course, with AEW, you know, out there on the horizon, I think you're going to see him turn it up a little bit tonight and, and keep that momentum going forward. That's that's my hope. Shane. Yeah, I agree. I think the AEW presence is really going to challenge WWE creative to step up their game. And I, and I think that kind of starts tonight with the, with the uh, not just the AEW show that that's uh, that's coming up, but, you know, their, the launch of their television uh, program the first of October. So. Um, how that will you know manifest itself on on uh, during the show tonight, I think is is the is the is the big intrigue to me uh, to see you know what, what's going to happen. Narge, uh, I agree with the other two gentlemen. Yeah, I the card on paper doesn't look strong, but as we talk through it, um, there there's some moments in there. I think we can build to the future. I think we're going to see surprises. AEW is definitely a factor. They they're going to want to make a statement tonight. You know, hey, follow us, boys. Um, so I think overall we're going to get a good show. I'm looking for, you know, a B plus, A minus show. It's, they're yep. not going to knock it out of the park, but they, they're going to turn it up a little bit. I heard uh, DirecTV says they're, they've got it listed as TV 14 too, so maybe push the envelope just a little bit. Well, I'm going to call this now. I, I think it'll be a C show. I think they're going to fall flat on their, on their tails, and I think that the creative is going to do absolutely the same thing they've done the last six months, and that's absolutely nothing. I'm hoping what? I'm surprised. What? I, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, nothing. You're not going to see any surprises. You're going to see anything. You're just going to see a show and move on. Did you just say for the last six months, WWE's done nothing creatively? Correct. You've lost your mind. You've lost your friggin' mind. Unbelievable. What a terrible way to end the show. I say, a terrible time. No, no I, I'm saying creatively as in not building stories, not doing anything. I don't think they do much here tonight besides just put a show on. Really? Mm, okay. Yeah. I, that's, my, that's my gut intake. Now, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope all you guys are right. Uh, because then everybody can say, well, you were deadly wrong. and they can You be, were the chump. I was the chump. You know, but, but, <laughs> you're, but maybe, you know what? Game, maybe you guys are the, the chumps. <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is you're going with your gut, which is filled with Cheetos and terrible beer. So uh, that's, I really don't put much Right now it's filled with Captain Morgan, but it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. That is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Captain Morgan, great, great drink, everybody. That's right. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I thank you for joining us on our premiere edition of the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Podcast. This will be the first uh, very many will do monthly as a special the Behind the Mic show. You can find us, as I said, on Apple, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Podbean, Stitcher, and all over across. So we hope you will follow us, join us. Make sure you follow the Behind the Mic show as well. And our Dinger Bat Chat, which is a monthly special uh, for our baseball season on baseball fans. So enjoy SummerSlam the evening, gentlemen. I know I'll be watching. Uh, I know most of you guys will too. Uh, and and uh, Sammy, I'm sure you'll be texting. And, and Narge, I'll probably be texting you and messaging you as well and Shane, all of us. And and let's hope I'm wrong, but I got a gut feeling I'm right, gentlemen. So <laughs> let's hope you're wrong. Yep. Uh, Great show. Right. Yeah, thank you. For, from uh, Sam Irwin, Shane Stone Cypher, Narge, I am Keith Gibson. We thank you for listening to the Champs and Chumps Wrestling Roundtable, part of the Behind the Mic Show from the Cheap Seats Sports Bar and Grill. <laughs>